Hi, my name is Dana and welcome to Yoga Download. This class will be a deep release for your neck and shoulders. You could have two blocks available, a space at the wall, and a hand towel as well for this class. You'll notice that I'm actually sitting on my two blocks and I've angled them to be in a V shape. I place my sits bones onto the blocks and my thighs are slightly supported by the blocks. This allows me to have a slight lift of my pelvis and my knees to release down towards the ground. Give it a try, but if you'd rather sit in another way, that's perfectly fine. I would like you at this point to grab a hold of your hand towel and open it up and roll it. So I'm rolling it and placing it behind my neck. So you'll see that the towel is actually supporting the curve of my neck. I pull gently forward with my hands and I press my neck then back into the towel just a little bit. From there, I lift through the crown of my head. Now, let the feedback of the towel inform you of um, the muscles of your neck. Notice any tension that uh, might be there for you today, perhaps noticing a bit of strength come to the neck. Now, I'm going to let my hands go from the towel, rest my hands onto my thighs, and let's close our eyes from here and center ourselves in our breath. So once more, just feel the connection of the hand towel against your neck. Move gently back into that pressure and lift up through the crown of the head. Breathe deep and complete. Breathe deeply into your abdomen and into your chest. Center yourself in your breath. Center yourself in your body. Stay connected to your breath and your body as once again you gently open your eyes. Now we'll take our hands back to the hand towel and now see how I pull my hands slightly forward and down. From there, I once again press back gently into the hand towel and I begin to rock my head side to side. Now, the towel is going to support the curve of your neck. So in other words, when I move my ear towards my shoulder, the towel creates a spacer for, um, for my neck. I continue to move my head side to side a couple more times. And as I do that, I'm increasing the range of motion side to side. So perhaps you could bring your ear towards your shoulder just a little bit more. And then when you bring your head back through the middle, try turning your head side to side. So I'm turning my chin over my shoulder and I feel the towel gently massaging the muscles of my neck. So I am feeling the muscles of my neck relax against the pressure of the hand towel and the pressure of the towel protects your neck from turning too far, too fast. Keep breathing deeply down into your abdomen and your chest. And then I bring my head back through the middle. Next, I'm going to start to roll a circle with my head 
to the first direction. So when I start to lift my chin and my eyes, I feel very supported in the back of my neck. If you don't feel very supported, just don't roll your head as far. You could even try to find something that's a little bit thicker consistency um, as far as towel goes. But you'll notice how right away I'm starting to open up and I'm able to move my head and my neck a little bit more. And then you could pause and change the circle to the second direction. Keep breathing. Breathe deeply into your abdomen and your chest as you open up that range of motion with this first round. Opening up that range of motion for head and neck. And then we're going to bring the head back through the middle. So give your hands just a little rest. And we're still going to stick with this towel. Um, but this time, instead of pulling forward and down, notice how I grip with my hands and I begin to pull. I'm scooping my arms forward and up. And notice how I let the towel slide towards the base of my skull. And I'm actually, with the strength of my arms, lifting myself up. So I'm lifting my head away from my neck. So you could practice that maybe two to three times, creating neck traction on yourself. You should feel the head lifting away from the neck. I feel my upper back lengthening as well. Now, we're going to lift and hold. So we're gonna create that traction for the neck. Lift, hold. Now, see how right hand could gently pull up and you could stretch through the side of the neck. I'm not collapsing my head down to the ground. Instead, as I now move into left arm and pull through my left hand, I'm lengthening left side of head. And back through the middle and going to the first side. And through the middle and the second side. Let's do one more time with each. And through the middle and one more side. And through the middle and then release the arms, release your hand towel to the side and we'll come back to that. Okay. But next from here, we're going to work on head and neck alignment. So, I'll place one hand to the back of my head and I'm going to gently press my head back into my hand. Now that will bring your head in alignment over your spine. I take my second hand towards the top of my head, towards the crown, and I reach, see how I'm reaching the crown of my head up into my fingertips? So I'm learning how to move my head slightly back, my crown slightly up, and I feel the four sides of my neck, front, sides, and back, all lifting up. So I'm actually lifting my head off of my neck. I'm lifting it up to the sky. So we're going to remember this feeling of head tractioning away from spine as we release the hands to the thighs. Now, be mindful of where your head is in space, where the neck is in space. As you come onto the hands and knees, bringing your blocks forward towards the front of the mat now, we're going to take downward facing dog to a standing forward bend to mountain pose. So downward facing dog, from the sticky mat, you would take your hands and have them a handprint forward of the shoulders. 
Notice your head. Feel length on the four sides of the neck. So lengthen the four sides of the neck away from the shoulders. And maintain that length as you anchor the toes, lift the hips, and stretch into a first downward facing dog. Feel length in the four sides of the neck. Stretch the crown, the top of your head, towards your hands. And just take a full deep breath there. And then gently come down onto the knees. Try a second downward dog with blocks underneath your hands. Taking blocks underneath the hands on the medium height. See how I've turned my hands out and I gently grip the blocks. This is going to allow your heels to come closer to the ground. So I lengthen through the crown of my head. I keep my head slightly lifted away from the ground. And this second time, I'm trying to stretch my heels into the ground and pull my hips back. Feel the four sides of your neck lengthen away from your shoulders as you reach the crown of the head towards the blocks. And then gently come down onto the knees. Now, if one of those two variations felt better for you, you can just go to that variation and know that we'll be walking the feet forward to a standing forward bend. If you're tight in your hamstrings, I would recommend keeping blocks underneath the hands. So hands are set a handprint forward of shoulders, lengthen through crown, and third time now, we're picking up and we're gonna stay and move on. So reach crown of the head towards the hands, stretch legs, straighten arms, and breathe. Maintain awareness in your neck. Keep lengthening head away from neck as you begin to walk your feet forward towards your hands. Your feet can stay hips width apart. You could be light on your fingertips or light on the blocks as you take your feet forward. Lengthen your spine, lengthen through the crown of the head. Take a full deep breath in a concave back um, standing forward bend or Uttanasana in the Sanskrit. Now, walking fingers slightly out to the sides on blocks or the floor. Bend elbows to sides. Let your head release and stretch towards the ground. If you can't get a slight bend in the elbows, do have your blocks underneath your hands in order to bend the elbows out to sides and head reaching towards the ground. But if you do get that slight bend in the elbows, feel free to stay low. Now let's on our next inhale, bring hands back underneath the shoulders, lengthen spine forward. Take hands up onto hips, open chest, and stand up tall. So from here, we'll take the feet all the way together in mountain pose. Unless that doesn't feel good on your back or your hip, you could keep your feet spread. I firmly push down through my feet. I place my arms next to my sides and I roll my shoulders back. Now, create space in the neck. As we begin to take some shoulder mobility, um, shoulder circles. So. I'm gonna reach my both of my arms forward and up into an Urdhva Hastasana or reaching my arms up and overhead. From here, notice how I rotate both of my shoulders and I spin my palms out away from each other. Then I reach my arms backward and bring my arms back next to my sides. Pause their arms next to sides. Then reach your arms straight back, rotate through the shoulders, reach your arms up, and bring the arms forward and down. Shoulders rolling back, take a full deep breath. So we'll repeat that one more time each direction. Reaching your two arms 
forward and up, stretching two arms in, in line with the shoulders. Then rotate your shoulders. This should feel comfortable in your shoulder joint. And then reach your arms backward, bring the arms back next to the sides. One more direction. Reach your arms back, rotate the shoulders, reach your arms up, and bring the arms back and next to the sides. Coming home to mountain pose. So we're gonna do this shoulder mobility work at the wall next. So go ahead and stand in mountain pose with your right hip facing the wall. Know that the farther away you are from the wall, um, the less range of motion you're gonna need to work. If you're a little closer to the wall, you're going to ask more range of your shoulder. So just be mindful of that. I'll be somewhere in the middle of what I just showed. I push down through my feet. I strengthen my abdomen, tuck my pelvis. Left hand stays next to side. Right fingertips can start to gently trace the wall. And notice how I'm gonna lengthen through my neck and I'm keeping my chest square to the wall in front of me as I gently bring my right hand through a circle. We're gonna go a couple of times, circling forward, up, and then back and down. Relax through your jaw and your neck as you circle your hand and your arm to the first direction. I'm keeping my chest square. I bring my hand back down next to me, and then I'm gonna to go to the second direction. So notice how I reach my arm back. I keep breathing deeply as I trace my hand on the wall, and I bring my hand back down towards me, and we'll do that two more times on the right side. Take a nice big circle. Know that if your shoulder is opening up for you and it's feeling good, you could always walk in a little closer to the wall. We'll do one more circle. In a firm mountain pose, mobilize that right shoulder. Keep length in both sides of the neck. Okay, we're gonna stay on the right side. Step away from the wall a little bit and place your right hand to be about the same height as your shoulder. Notice how I have spun my fingers backward. You can be light on your fingertips, or if it's not too intense, you can press the palm of your right hand firmly. Now I roll my right shoulder back, and I'm gonna take ear to shoulder and ear to shoulder like we did with the hand towel work at the beginning of class. Now, I'm sure that I'm feeling supported in both sides of my neck like I had when I had the hand towel in place. When I bring my head through center, I'm gonna turn my head side to side and I continue to roll my right shoulder back. When I bring my head back through the middle, I bring my chin towards my chest. We're not doing a full circle, we're doing a semicircle. Rolling ear to shoulder, and then rolling chin to chest and second ear to shoulder. Breathe and stretch another one to two times. And when you bring the head back home through the middle and release your right hand, take your left hand to the crown of the head and your right hand to the back of the head and train your head to move slightly back and the crown of the head up. So you actually feel your head pulling away from the neck. I feel my back and my neck strengthen in a healthy way. It doesn't feel aggressive. 
And then I'm gonna keep my head on straight and keep it lifted as I release my arms. And then I'll turn to the second direction. So now my left hip is facing the wall. My left arm is facing the wall and I'm attempting to remember the lift of my head. So keep that imprint. Abdomen firm, legs firm. And know that the closer you are to the wall, the more intense the mobility work is going to be in your shoulder. So you can let your fingers come around in a circle. Let your left hand trace that circle. Keep taking deep breaths. Try to maintain the lift of the head and the length of your neck. Full deep breaths, relaxing your face as you take those shoulder circles to the first direction. And then we could do the second direction. So three circles to that second direction, circle and open the shoulder. Just letting those fingers walk along the wall. Notice how I'm keeping my chest square to the wall in front of me. I'm staying engaged through my shoulder. And then when we slide that left hand back home, we could take the left hand straight away from the left shoulder let the left shoulder roll away from the ear and you can take your ear to your shoulder and ear to your shoulder let your fingers be spun back as you take ear to shoulder and ear to shoulder remember to feel the curve in your neck supported by the imaginary towel. When your head comes back through the middle, you can shake your head side to side. And then when your head comes back through the middle, you can bring chin to chest and roll your head through a semicircle, side to side. Bring your head back through the middle. Then you can release your hands and take your um, right hand up to the crown of the head, take your left hand behind the head and press head back, lift crown up. Feel your head lift up and off of the neck. Take another deep breath. And then keep your head where it is as you let your hands go. Full deep breath in and out, mountain pose, head lifted off of the neck, neck lifting away from the shoulders. And then gently release that mountain pose and come back onto the hands and the knees. So we're gonna repeat the downward facing dog, standing forward bend mountain pose, sequence on the sticky mat. So use props if, if that's better for you. Take your hands, a handprint forward of your shoulders. Remember imprint of fingers to back of head and to crown, slightly lift head, stretch forward through crown, anchor toes, and then lift into downward facing dog. Feel length in both sides of the neck, stretch through both of the arms, stretch through both of the legs. Take a full deep breath in and out. 
And then inhale, gently looking forward towards hands and bring your feet forward. Can you lengthen through the crown of your head, lengthen through the back of your neck, make the spine long, and then like we did before, either hands on floor or hands on blocks. When you take the hands wide, you roll your shoulders away from your ears, bend your elbows, and let the head move towards the ground. Full deep breath in and out. When you lengthen your spine forward, take your hands back underneath your shoulders, then take hands onto hips, roll shoulders back, standing up into mountain pose. Bring your feet together once again into mountain pose. Let's try those circles a second time. So you roll your shoulders back, lift, through neck, lift through crown, press head, gently back. Reach two arms up. Now rotate your shoulders and try to pull both of your arms back and remember the feedback of the wall. Imagine you have a wall against each hand that is helping you to, to engage through the shoulders and through the chest as you bring your arms back through the middle. Then I reach my arms back, I rotate my shoulders, and I imagine I'm in between two walls and my fingers are tracing and walking up those two walls. That helps me to roll my shoulders back as I reach my arms up and forward. When I bring my arms back home, I roll my shoulders back. We'll do that one more time. So head back, head up, chest open arms forward and up, rotate your shoulders, spin your palms, imagine your hands are in between two walls and you're actually tracing your fingers along those two walls to help you lift your chest and open your shoulders. We'll do one more, arms go back, shoulders rotate open, glide fingers against those two imaginary walls as you reach your arms upward into Urdhva Hastasana or arms extending upward. Arms come next to the sides in mountain pose, roll the shoulders back, take a full deep breath in and out. Feel your head go back, feel the crown of the head lift up. Hopefully we're feeling more aligned and open at this point in the neck. Now spread your feet hips width apart. Place your hands onto your hips, roll your shoulders back. We'll come forward into Uttanasana or our intense forward stretch. Hinge forward from the hips, lengthen forward through the crown of the head. Let your fingertips be underneath shoulders or even, again, fingers slightly wide if that's working for you well. Roll your two shoulders back. Let's lift shoulders away from ears. Let spine stretch towards the ground. Take a full deep breath in and out. Then inhale, lengthen spine, lifting head. Planting two palms onto floor or onto blocks. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana in the Sanskrit. Press through the hands or press into your blocks. If that's what you're using, maintain slight lift of head and stretch through crown. Another full deep breath, in and out. And then let's come down onto the knees. And we'll arrange ourselves to sit once again. So you'll see that I'm taking my blocks into that upside down V shape again and sitting on them. I have my hand towel nearby as well. I sat in simple cross legs before, and so I'm just going to take the alternate cross of my legs since we're doing this a second time, and it is a hip opener. So be comfortable in your legs, be comfortable in your hips. Your knees should be releasing at least in line with the hips, if not lower than the hips. And we'll come back to this neck work one more time. So we place 
the towel behind the neck into the curve of the neck. We move the head gently back. I pull gently forward down with hands, press back with, uh, with my neck slightly and my head slightly. And then I start to go side to side. And I don't know how it's feeling for you, but I know for me, I'm feeling way more open now. And I'm actually pulling my hand into the towel a bit more firmly and that's creating a bit more of a massaging type of effect on my neck. When we come back through the middle, we could turn the head over the shoulder both directions. I'm turning the head and breathe. Then when we come back through the middle, we can take that circle, the full circle now. When the back of the neck is supported, we can start to lift the head up and move through that range. It should feel, um, it should feel smooth, it should feel really nice, it shouldn't feel too aggressive. If it does, always back off. Circle, circle the head and stretch the neck. And when we come back through the middle, we can give the hands a rest if they need it. I'll just go right into the neck traction, which we did earlier. So see how I hook my hands forward, I pull up, and then I'm just gently rocking side to side. I'm lengthening the entire side of my spine. When I pull with my hand, I feel the side of my spine and neck lengthen. Deep breaths. And give yourself that last traction through the middle, lifting the head. Now, can you maintain this feeling of lift while you release the hand towel? Keep the head lifted. Take one hand behind the head, one hand to the top. Press gently back with head. Lift up with head, and you should feel your neck actually lift higher. You should actually feel your spine grow a little bit. Now. We want to keep that feeling of lift in the head as we release the hands and perhaps just enjoy feeling light in the neck and open in your posture for a couple of breaths. And from here, we'll actually move um, onto the back and we're going to move into just a Shavasana, a Shavasana with neck support. So, I'm going to choose to place my blocks underneath my legs and I'm going to use this hand towel and now I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm rolling and this is going to create a slightly thicker roll. You could also use, if you have a yoga blanket on hand, you could use a yoga blanket for a bigger roll. So you're going to see when I come onto my back, I place my roll uh, into the curve of my neck. So where it was before, but now I let that curve be supported as I come flat to my back. So I release my hips away from my low back. I feel the back of my head drop into the ground and the curve of my neck supported as I let my arms go out to the sides. And I invite you to feel that gentle cushion 
of the towel supporting the neck and relax, relax your neck muscles. Relax through the neck, the shoulders, the face. Feel where the towel is touching the neck and consciously relax there. Feel your head heavy into the ground underneath you. Feel your neck and your shoulders relaxed and open. And now breathe deeply into your chest and your abdomen. And keep your neck relaxed, your throat relaxed. As you slowly begin to bend the knees and the elbows on your own time, and from there you can roll towards your side and you can press up and Let's sit together and sit in any way that you'll be comfortable. Bring your head into alignment one more time by gently rolling shoulders back, moving head back and lifting crown of the head up. Close the eyes and just feel that alignment and let that imprint be set into your body for the rest of the day. Maintain that lift of the head as you take your hands in front of your heart. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you soon.